So I hope you're getting a sense that lists are very powerful, that by using mutation, by having lists that could contain other lists or any other kind of data we want, we can build very complex data structures and we can do lots of interesting things. I'm going to introduce one more list operation, which will allow us to add a new element at the end of the list. So we've seen that we can use lists to store complex data. The elements of the list can be any type we want, including other lists. And we've seen that we can use mutation to change the value of a list. And that mutation is visible through any reference to the same list object. So now I'm going to introduce some other list operations. The first one is append. And append is like a procedure, but it's a method. So we use it similar to the way we use find on strings. We'll have a list first, then a dot, followed by append. And what we pass in is the element we want to append to the list. So append will add a new element to the end of a list. And the important thing about append is it's mutating the list that it's invoked on. It's not creating a new list. It's mutating the old list. So as an example of the use of append, let's assume that instead of replacing curly in the three stooges, we want to end up with four stooges. We'll add shemp and keep the other three as they are. So what we want to do is to append shemp at the end of the list we have. We would do that by invoking append on the stooges, passing in the string shemp as the input. So here's what happens. After the first assignment, the name stooges refers to the list containing the three elements, mo, Larry, and curly. When we invoke append, it modifies that object, adding a new element to it. So after the append, the list that stooges refers to now has four elements. We have not created a new list. Note that there's no assignment from the result of append. What we've done is modify the value that Stooges refers to by adding a new element to it. 